My name is Jordan Shaw. I am the business unit manager for the Eurofins Microbiology Laboratory that you're sitting in. Um, I've been with the company for about five years. I've been out in Colorado for less than that, um, but I'm really excited <laughs> to be out here, really excited um, for our laboratory to be out here. So um, really glad that you're here as well. A little bit of housekeeping, obviously lunch, if you haven't grabbed any, the room next door is where it is. Feel free to have a first lunch or a second lunch if you've already eaten. Um, Thank you. Restrooms are downstairs along the main hallway where you came in. And then Wi-Fi code if you need it, uh, the network name is yellow and the key is that nice fun alphanumeric randomly generated IT code. So <laughs> there you go. Um, after today's event up here, we'll be giving lab tours. So if you're interested in doing that, just hang out. We'll go in about groups of 10 because you get more than that. Then you, if you're tailing, you can't see what's going on and it gets kind of loud and echoey. So, um, if you're interested in the micro lab tour afterwards, just hang around. I'll have some of my lab tours to take you around the building and show you what we do here. Um, just a real quick note on that. This building, we do microbiology primarily. So we do a lot of CBD testing. We do a lot of uh, food testing. And now we're doing a lot of CBD in food testing. So um, we do that. And we have sister labs all around the country that do uh, a lot of other testing, chem chemistries, things like that. So. Um, afterwards, if, if that's an interest to you, talk to me, talk to my salesperson, Ann, who greeted you at the door. Um, but yeah, we, we'd love to talk about, about what Eurofins does. So without any further ado, um, I'd like to introduce David Wilkinson. He is with the Hemp Business Advisors. It's his team that is uh, hosting this event, and uh, so we're very glad to have him here. Very excited about the partnership that we're working with on him. So uh, please welcome David. Good afternoon. Uh, hopefully you had a good lunch and you're ready to talk about something that sounds really boring that we spiced up. Everybody loves SOPs, right? You get up in the morning and I said, wow, I can't wait to write some administrative, exciting, and then you need a second cup of coffee. So it's going to be a great uh, topic on how SOPs make you wealthy. Um, the, gr the great part about this, I've already met two people that love SOBs in the room, which three, uh, three, which are three more people I've met in the last two years. So this is, this is great. Um, when you think about your um, standard operating procedures, what's the first thing that pops into your mind about the hemp industry? There are none. There are none, <laughs> which is a factual statement. Now, I have an SOP personally, I'd like for you to help me with it. If you could please take your cell phone or either turn it off or turn it on silent, that would help me to stay focused on what I'm doing. But you have personal SOPs that you follow that you don't even know that you do. They're called values. And you're fine with those as long as everyone in your life follows your value system. And the moment that somebody steps over that line, what happens? You get upset because they broke your SOP. Now, what is an SOP? Well, it's about landscaping. You didn't know that, did you? Well, I'm gonna tell you how I landscape my lawn. I grew up landscaping, I grew up on a farm, and this is the way you landscape. Here you have a lawn. The first thing you do is you get your weed eater, okay? Uh, hopefully it's, it's got some power to it, you know, gas or electric, uh, it doesn't whine like the old days. You know, and you, what do you do? You edge the yard, you, you, you edge it right, and you weed it all around the trees because then you're gonna mow everything where you need to do in the right lines, and then lastly, use the blower. This is something I don't think about. When I start to think about taking care of my lawn, I don't say, let me write down the four SOPs I follow with the lawn, <laughs> right? And that's the way it's supposed to be in business. I also have an SOP for my email because I learned having run numerous companies that I like one email box for everyone in the entire company and I put those into different boxes and I know exactly what's happening in my company. Therefore, there's nothing that falls through the cracks when it comes to communication. Well, there's also SOPs with extraction labs. And right now, there are no SOPs in the majority of people's lives because they don't understand that they're not gonna be here in a year from now. Because that's what happens. Have you talked to the industry leaders? Do you know what they're saying? 50 to 90% of the businesses that were in this year will not be here next year. And you're going to find that. They're going out of business. But why is that? Because there's no SOPs. SOPs protect you and allow you to have your business in a year from today. Because nobody got into business saying, I can't wait to go bankrupt. Anyone? anyone? <laughs> nobody says that. So I remember meeting the extractor. 
Um, he was uh, he was a person that was very interesting, and uh, he got some money from a, a, a fellow person in, in his in his family. And I remember meeting him, and I said, "How was your first month?" He said, "Good. I developed my own extraction unit, and I made two million dollars net profit in my first month." I said, "Great. Can I have your business card?" He said, I don't have a business card. I said, but you're in business. And he says, I don't have one. I said, well, what's the name of your email address? And he gave me the email address and it said at yahoo.com. And I'm going, oh no. Uh, I said, do you have a website? No. You have a registered name for your company. Oh, I don't have a company. Where's the money going? Well, my personal account. <laughs> I wonder if I gave him any referrals. No, I didn't get many referrals because why? As a business person, these are things that are normal. However, in the industry, they're not the norm. I'm finding people that are the most passionate people I've ever met in my life in the hemp industry. They live, breathe, die the plant, man. They love CBD. They love what's going to happen. They love the new things that are coming out. And that's all they're about is their passion. But the problem is passion without SOPs will not last very long. So we're going to talk about what they look like and what are the standard operating procedures. We're going to talk about three different points today. The first one is volatility is not risk. Number two, you have notes right there in front of you. Three, costly mistakes. And lastly, urgency toward the insignificant. So if you came to be bored today, you came to the wrong place. We're at a labs. This is where high, intense, exciting things happen right here. All right, so here's what it is. Here's the opening problem. The hemp industry has been exploding at such a rapid pace that it morphed into a movement that has its own momentum. How, what is something that turns into a movement happen? It means this, that when you are in the movement, wherever you go, you bump into the correct people. I can't go to a hotel lobby and walk through it without somebody. I am overhearing somebody talk about the latest something in hemp. I remember one time I was sitting there having a meeting and we were talking about hemp. And this person over here was over listening to us and came over and said, listen, I'm an investor. Can I join your conversation? You bump into people at the airport. Everywhere you go when you're involved in the movement, you bump into the right people. So the hectic pace does not allow for most business owners and entrepreneurs the luxury of stopping and creating policies and procedures, much less implementing them, evaluating and improving them to the point of success. Now, I just talked to somebody this past week. You know what they said? I attended the NOCO Hemp Expo. It was, it's the largest hemp symposium in the world at this point. There was over 10,000 people right here in Denver. And um, there were people from all different kind of countries. It was awesome. But I met a person that said in March, at the end of March when they went to it, just this week they got done with their last business card from that event. Wow. <laughs> That's how thick the cards were. It was an awesome event. I asked them, what was, your, what was your process of taking a card and turning it into cash? What was, your, what was the way that you did this? Do you know what the person said? Well, I just emailed them. But it took them almost three months to email everyone. Did they close on anyone? And SOP says, when I get a business card, I have a system in place that's really easy to follow. And it always, or most of the time, turns into a sale, turns into a, a proposal, a client. Now, this brings us to a place of volatility. And we're going to talk about that in the marketplace and high risk in the future. I guarantee you, if you brought your CBD product and you gave it to Jordan, you said, Jordan, I want to know if all the, all the ingredients on the back of my label are true and accurate. You know what he's going to do? He's going to kind of, he's going to pick it up and say, mm, I feel like there's 32.5% CBD. <laughs> I think there's a little bit of sodium. Hang on a second. Yeah, 0.2%. No, he's not going to do that. What is he going to do? He's going to take the product down to the lab and test it. He has an order and he doesn't do one thing next. He does them all in order because of the heat and all the things. And when you go take the 10 minute tour, it'll blow your mind about how important you need to have the right lab partnering with you. And if you've met the new number of farmers that we have met, but their crops went hot last year, ask them how many had a lab that was testing their crops to make sure the THC level didn't spike. Because we've talked to people that lost crop after crop after crop. You've got to have a great lab that will help you do that. All right, so let's talk about this idea about volatility. So volatility is not risk. That's not what we're talking about. 
So this topic is the speed or amount of fluctuation in the hemp marketplace. This means it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with the movement. So it's an unexpected change outside your control that directly impacts you and your organization and makes your life sometimes very difficult in the industry. When the Farm Bill came out and got signed by President Trump last year in December 2018, you had so many people that were cheering that knew about it. And the rest of the globe had no idea what they what you were talking about. It was like, yeah, he signed the, I mean, there were parties. I, I, I'm sure that many, many people had balloons and go Trump. It was wonderful. <laughs> Why? Well, what happened here is that signature changed the world forever. Forever. 25,000 acres were grown in America in 2017. 70% was CBD because $60 million had to be imported because we didn't have enough in our own country. And now Colorado, second in the entire nation, has more than that growing than the whole U.S. two years ago. It's incredible. It is a volatile situation. You don't know what's going to happen. So when something happens to you, good or bad, it means you're in a volatile situation. So what does that look like? I was sitting across from uh, business partners and, and they were telling me about their company and they were really pale. They did not look good. And I don't know if they weren't having their CBD that morning or what was going on, but they were talking to me and they said, well, we just lost our company. And I said, what happened? They said, our bank sent us a letter in the mail and said, because you're in CBD, we're closing all your personal and corporate accounts. And by the time they got that, it had already closed it. It ruined all of their <laughs> supply chain, all the people that they worked with, all the contracts fell through and they lost their company. That's called volatility. Nothing you could have done would have changed that. So when, you know, what, what our, one of our banks is called Community Banks of Colorado, and we were giving them about six months ago a lot of business because it was only three hundred to a thousand dollars a month to maintain, right, right, the regulations per account, which is which is pretty good. And then what happened is they changed a policy, and now you have to maintain a daily balance of fifty thousand dollars. And I said to them, I can't give you any more referrals. That's a volatile situation that had nothing to do with me, had to do with an outside agency that impacted my business. Right now, the hemp industry is one of the most volatile and exciting industries in the globe. In your lifetime, you will not see something like this happen again. Now, however, let's talk about risk because risk is something you can control. Volatility is something you can't. So this is the possibility of lost <coughs> revenue, increased expenses, and lawsuits. Um, I, I happen to be at the right place at the right time in March this year. I was the only one in U.S. history that was at a bank-sanctioned event that talked about cannabis. And it was creating momentum for the cannabis industry. The press was there. People flew in from other states. It was awesome. And while it was there, we talked about risk and what's going to happen over the next 24 months in the industry. Risk is you're going to lose money, get more expenses you could possibly imagine, and be sued in the next 12 to 24 months if you don't do SOPs. Nobody tells you that. They're thinking we can wing this thing. My passion is so strong, I can overcome everything. Not your taxes. <laughs> Just call the IRS. I don't want to pay my taxes this year. I have a lot of momentum in hemp. They will not care that you're still going to pay your taxes. So what is some of the risk that we're looking at? Now, look, look. This was a crisis. This is a crisis because that's where number number lots of companies right now are about to have a huge crisis this year that could have been avoided based upon reflection. Now, with that word, I'm not talking about the past. I'm talking about asking the question of stopping, taking a breath, and asking one question: Where could my company get hit with huge expenses? Where could I lose huge revenue? Where could I be sued? These are the things that if you're running a million miles an hour and you don't take a breath, it would never cross your mind because everybody thinks their passion is going to protect them. So what does it look like? What are the three risks you can eliminate, you can eliminate completely by creating an SOP for each? So what is a standard operating procedure? Well, we'll talk about that right here. It is a policy. 
A policy is what you want to accomplish. So, you know, if you're in farming right now, you're, you're a hemp farmer, this is the way you did it, right? You've got your, and I held in my hand, our team did, we were in Oregon, and we were given a jar this side that had $40,000 worth of seed in it. It was so cool. It was like, I felt like I had the world in my hand. It was awesome. And I guarantee you, the farmers, what they do, right? They, they take a straw, right? And they suck up some of the seed, and they just go, <laughs> right? Because that's what you do. But the farmer, all of you know this, right? The farmer. No, what do they do? They have rows. You have rows. You don't go out to a cornfield and you can see a mile away. Isn't that amazing? No, that's an SOP. They have an SOP for everything if you're in farming. So you have to know what you're wanting to accomplish. Now, if you're a young entrepreneur, do you know what you want to do in, in the hemp industry? Everything. So if somebody calls, what do you do? Yeah. No, what do you want me to do? And they change their tune every time because they're an entrepreneur. That's not an SOP. I don't want to do lab work. Someone will die because I don't want no chemistry and I hate math. Unless it's timesing something. So you need to know what you want. Number two, how you're going to do it. How you're going to do it. Now, I was uh, in South Africa. I, I lived there for seven years. I actually started the company I'm with there. And one of the things that blew me away is um, I was at a, a meeting with about 50 people and they were, everyone standing up telling what they were doing and a cleaning company stood up. And she said, um, hi, my name is Sophia and I have a cleaning company and I wanna share with you about how we clean differently than other people. And then she told me about, she told the whole group about the three different rags that she uses. And this rag is green, this rag is blue, and this rag is red. And I didn't know this, but you needed a red rag to clean the toilet, and that's all it got cleaned. And I was thinking of the number of people that used the same rag of the toilet that they used on the sink that they used to wash your plates. And I was like, well, that explains a lot. That's a procedure. What is your procedure how you do what you do? So if I come into your business and I say, let's say you're an extraction. And I say to you, I would like your operating manual as an extractor. I don't know anything about it. Can I please have it so I know how to do extraction right now? You should be able to hand that to me. If you say we're doing micro loans, you should be able to give me a manual that tells me how to do micro loans that I don't know anything about it. And if I follow these steps, I can do just like what you do. Now, why is that so important? Because if you're planning on being a one person entrepreneur, you're not going to be here very long. You need a team, and that team needs to know how you're doing business. So they need to be clearly described, and then you implement them. Now, this is going to be a big problem, because if you're really, really busy, guess what you don't have time to do? Execute. <laughs> so you could have this amazing SOP booklet and never do anything with it. Oh, no, I have a manual. It looks awesome on that shelf, doesn't it? No, you have to do something. You have to execute. And then what do you do? You ask the question, did it work? Did it work? Because if it didn't work, it meant your SOP didn't work. Then it creates something called an infrastructure. If you got a hundred clients right now today, if you don't have the proper infrastructure, you would say this, David, it would collapse our company, we'd go under. We don't have the systems in place. Okay, that means you don't have the infrastructure for exponential growth. Good. It's necessary for two things, sustainability and profitability. Why is IBM IBM? They're sustainable and they're profitable. They have the same way how to do windows if you're in Egypt or you're in South Africa or you're in Boulder, Colorado. It's the same stuff. Word is always Word. Microsoft Word is always there. I don't pop it open and all of a sudden it's Microsoft PowerPoint. It's Word. It's a standard operating procedure that they've been able to become a monopoly over. And if you create your SOBs like they're supposed to be created, you can become a dominant force in the industry if that's what you want. Or you may not be here in 12 months. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Here's a risk exa example for you. Imagine, there's a partnership here. Imagine, that, if you will, that you found your perfect hire, okay? And you've been looking for this individual to fulfill this position for quite some time. Here it is a year later. And instead of you being elated, well, the employee is ending in a disaster. They're not producing what they said they could produce. You paid tens of thousands of dollars, and here's the problem. You're frustrated, they're frustrated, but you, they ask you, but um, what, was, what, what were the things you wanted me to do? And you said, but go back and look at your job description and contract you signed, and they said, but you never gave me one. <laughs> right? 
some of you know people are working without job descriptions. I know I am right now. Steve is right now. We're all working. <laughs> Why is that? Because everybody's so busy. The thought about doing a job description seems so lowly and, and unacceptable because we have a world to change. We can change the world with job descriptions. <laughs> so now what? All right. So here's one of the things that's going to help you. You need to have a lab. If you are in CBD products, if you actually are partnered with people with CBD products, if you're into farming, genetics, you have to be tested. And eventually the government will make it mandatory. So if you are not partnered with a lab like Eurofins, my encouragement is either get partnered now, go take a tour, sign on the bottom line and get it done or be forced to later and maybe pay some pretty hefty fines. So here's what it is. Eurofins has created a reputation through accuracy and holistic testing, which is based upon a stable laboratory. This is awesome. Now I know that mobile laboratories are coming. I've already seen it in the next couple of years where they're gonna have a Porsche, right? A Porsche <laughs> with a trailer on the back. It, it, yeah, it, it, yeah, a test Porsche, thank you. So Tesla, oh sorry, sorry, Tesla. A Tesla with, with a, right with a trailer. And it's, and it's gonna come to your farm if you have this many acres or higher, and they're gonna bring a test kit, and they're gonna test it on the spot. They're gonna give you where you're at, and you can either need to harvest right now or fix this, put more phosphate in. They're gonna tell you exactly what to do. But for right now, you gotta drive your own Tesla here, okay, and get it tested. So, Eurofins, after taking the tour, our team took a tour here, they equal SOPs. They don't do things without following their standard procedures. So if you want to see what it looks like, take the tour. Now, as you know, the soil is the most important of everything that you have. If you have amazing genetics and you have terrible soil, it doesn't matter, does it? So please make sure you get your soil tested, get your water tested, get your genetics tested before you go into this. Otherwise, everything goes hot and you lose everything anyway if you don't have a THC license. All right, so take a 10 minute tour after this and um, Jordan will be a part of that. All right, so here's what it is. Incompetency does not have consequences at this point in the hemp industry. You, you know this, right? Now, come on now, this has been hilarious. I have seen more hilarious examples of horrific business practices and principles that I've ever seen in my life. And if you don't have a good sense of humor, you should get out of the industry. Okay, right now, you gotta giggle, it's hilarious. I mean, to walk up to somebody and say, so, how long have you been an extractor? Oh no, I started yesterday. Well, how are you doing it? Well, I've got a couple cows that are turning in a circle and it's pulling things and we're grinding. You're gonna see things you've never experienced. It's a funny place to be. And if you don't have a sense of humor, go get into another industry. Because this is one that's gonna make you laugh every day by all the problems taking place. Now, all those problems mean what? that you have an opportunity to shine if you care about SOPs. Because if you actually walk out and you've got a business card, and you have a flyer, and you have a, I mean, a team, and you have a website, you are ahead of 90% of the people in the industry. And they're gonna look at you and go, man, what a competent business person. I would rather do business with a competent business person who's still learning things than a competent person who doesn't know anything about business. Because it's gonna come back to bite you. Right? All right, so let's talk about this next part. Costly mistakes, because nobody got in the industry to pay a whole bunch of expenses. So what are the three main mistakes that cost your company millions of dollars in your initial five years of operations? So here's the first one. There's no SOPs throughout your company. Internal. So there's no way to know who's doing what. Have you ever heard, talked to somebody who was in a brand new startup and there was like 20 people there and everyone was doing everyone else's job? Yeah. You know that, right? It's called overlap. And it's called frustration, isn't it? Where you're saying, okay, this is my job. And then also Sue comes and takes a part of my job and goes and does it. I'm like, but Sue, this is my job. Oh, it's mine too. What does your job description say? Oh, I don't have one. Oh, me neither. What are we doing again? That's internal. This costs you millions of dollars the larger the team that you have because it means that the inefficiencies grow with every new hire. Number two, so, oh, by the way, this is kind of the basics of business, isn't it? But for him, this is really advanced. You need a vision statement. <laughs> it should be on your website. The mission, the purpose, and maybe the strategy of how you're doing what you're doing, where you're going, how you're gonna accomplish it, 
job description contracts, employees manual, all the things that everybody says this, but it never makes me any money. No, but it costs you millions if you haven't gotten it done. And nobody knows what they're doing or where they're going. All right, number two, no SOPs throughout your supply chain. This is external. What is an SOP with an external partner with contract? Well, let's take a look at it. It's from soil to sale, isn't it? I'll never forget the number of farmers I have talked to in the last six months that told me last year what happened with the harvester. Have you heard these stories? And so all of a sudden the person's got 10, 20, 30, 100 acres last year. They were growing hemp, maybe legally, maybe not. Now they're legal, it's good. And guess what happened? They found a person who was a harvester who promised them with a handshake because I, I believe in handshakes and just sign afterwards, right? You say, <laughs> I believe in you unless you prove me wrong. And then you sign. Good. There was no signatures. So guess what happened when it was time for harvesting? The harvester here, the harvesters in Colorado and probably in other states as well, got so full, they were unable to go to many of the farmers and the farmers lost all of their crops. And we've heard person after person express this. Okay, this is a year to have signed contracts. This is a year to have an SOP that says, if I'm a farmer, I have a signed contract with a harvester. And if they don't come and harvest, they have to pay me for my full crops. And then you have it signed and you have it notarized and you have it with a blood seal and whatever you gotta do. But make sure you've got your external SOPs. This is what happens all the time when somebody buys biomass or sells isolate and what happens when there's no contract and people are sending JPEGs to one another? Uh-uh, doesn't work that way. So lastly, no SOPs through your investment strategy. Now, I don't know about you, but we meet in the marketplace on a regular basis, eight out of 10 people who do not have enough funds to expand. They have brilliant ideas. They don't have the capital. How many of you know at least 10 people right now in the industry that need money? Okay, good, half of you. The other half, either you need money and didn't want to raise your hands, or you knew more than 10 and didn't want to raise your hand because you were embarrassed you knew so many people that needed money. Well, you need SOPs for your investments. So I remember um, <laughs> our team was doing consulting work for a company, um, uh, for a farming company. And that week, there were three deals. Somebody came in and brought $25,000 in cash. And, and there was, um, there was a, a, little, uh, a little napkin. And there was a pen signature on the napkin saying you can have 5% of my company for the $25,000 in cash. And the napkin was given and, 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 then, and then it happened with $50,000 and then another $75,000. While we were there, three napkins were the SOPs. And I'm going, this is horrible. This is wrong. A banker would be rolling in his grave if he heard that was taking place. So what are some SOPs? Well, here's what it is. If you are looking for funding or you have people looking for funding, the reason why eight out of 10 people need funding and don't receive funding is because they don't know one thing. What does the investor want? Did you know there's seven main components that every single hedge fund, individual investor, investor group, what they are looking for and how long it will take you to go from where you are today for them to say yes. See, most people say, I have a brilliant idea. I'm so excited about it, but they don't have any way to get from there to get the funds. <laughs> I remember um, I'm building, we're, we're currently building a relationship with four different investment companies right now. They all are asking us to please give them companies um, that need investment. And right now we can't give them any because Nobody knows what the SOP is to gain money. So we've developed an entire system to solve this problem because we're tired of hearing person after person saying, I have a great idea, but there's no money. No, there's tons of money. Were you not at the NOCO Hemp Expo Investors Forum? Did you not hear what the gentleman said from England, the largest hedge fund in the world? They're putting a trillion dollars into the industry in the next 24 months. There's tons of money. It's easy to get. It's fun to do, but you gotta know what they want. So we're gonna talk to you about that after this, this slide. So here's what it is. SOPs not only make you money, they also save you money. Now, what we do at the Hemp Business Advisors is we focus on a couple different things. One of those is we help you to make money. 
We love helping people to generate more revenue with their business. We help them get investors because we're connected with different four different companies that are asking us for investors right now, for investments right now. What one of the things we don't do is we don't save you money. That is not our passion. Uh, we'd rather help you make more money than anything else. But but you got to save money because at the end of the day, if you spend it all when it's Christmas time, there's no money to buy presents for your family or go to the Bahamas. You can't do that if you spend it all. So one of the people in the room here that's partnered with us is named Sean Covey, and Sean has a system like you would not believe. I have, in 20 years of doing executive coaching and consulting to over 300 companies, I have never seen these kind of SOPs. And uh, Sean, why don't you just wave right now so everybody knows you? Okay, well, I'm gonna ask you a couple questions from his lips to get you to think about how to, how to have an SOP that you don't even know exists to save you possibly hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, even more. So here's it is, if you are in, in any way, shape or form involved in seeds, cloning, manufacturing, bottling, or genetics, there's tax credits for you in Colorado. Okay, and they're different in different states and different regions, but there's, there's tax credits for you. Do you know what those tax credits are? If you're like me, my answer is no, because my SOPs are not about saving money, they're about making money. Number two, do you own any commercial real estate? Uh, do you pay $30,000 in property taxes per year? If your answer is yes, I paid more than that last year, okay, now you're starting to think about what is my SOP of saving money? Uh, number three, have you, are you hiring more than two employees per year? And if you said I did that yesterday, you need to talk to Sean about that. Lastly, do you pay more than 50,000 in income tax or pay over 200,000 in property and cash actually premiums per year. If you answered yes to any of those, or you have some bigger partners that actually are going through some of these challenges, it means that all of the revenue that you're making is going into taxes without knowing what the law is and how to save money. If you say, I hate writing a tax check at the end of the year, it's probably because you haven't talked to Sean yet. So therefore, if you want to not spend time developing SOPs and studying tax law and all the creative credits that are out there, I would just go to him and sit down with him, have a conversation, be blown away by what he could save you. And by the way, his financial model is even more amazing than that. All right, so infrastructure does not grow your company financially, but it will ensure you still have one next year. <laughs> all right, okay, let's look at this next one. It's a, it's a busy schedule, time man management. It's my third point, which is urgency toward the insignificant. Some of you are saying right now, David, I do not want to take time to become investor ready. Well, then you won't get any. You have to take time for the things that are important, right? So what does urgency mean? Urgency does not mean busy. It means that you are driven toward a goal that you're unwilling not to achieve. So urgency is not a negative thing. I've met busy people that get nothing done. We're talking about urgency. What's significant in your company right now? If you said, well, I go to different expos to get clients, and then it takes you three months to return their calls and to email them back, what does that mean? You don't have any urgency, or you're so swamped with so many problems, you can't get to it. So here's what we've got. Number one, your, how priorities can decrease your urgency with overlapping tasks with your team. Number one, the development of your business system. Um, we're talking right now for a major contract with a company um, that has uh, tea and coffee and smoothies. Um, Las Vegas has asked them to come in and come to all of their major stores there. It's a huge opportunity. And I said to them, what is your business strategy for moving forward? And they gave me a paragraph that was so clear, a little tear came to my eye. I was like, aw, somebody knows what they're doing. Because it's just, it's just so meaningful to me as a business person. Uh, your business system, it ensures that tomorrow you're doing the same thing you were doing today. You met the person. So what were you doing this time last year? No, I was grooming, I was grooming cows. I was shaving them. Oh, okay. What are you doing now? Oh, now I'm selling isolate for five million. Well, how did you go from there there? Oh no, I, it just, I just, I, don't, I like isolate. I like the name. I like how it rolls off my tongue and I'm selling it. <laughs> That's not a business system. What's a business system? It's a system of your business that ensures you won't go under financially. That you're doing the same thing today and you're doing it better this time next year. Number two, 
The speed of your follow-up proves to every single person in this room whether or not you're in this for the long term and you're a business person or you're just trying to win it. I cannot understand the lack of time it takes when somebody takes a business card from me in the head ministry, how long it takes them to email me. If you take longer than 24 hours, I'm probably not interested in you. I, I don't have time. I need people with urgency. If I give you something, I expect you to contact me. And if you don't, the, by the third day, I've forgotten I met you because I just met another thousand people. This, the, the, the industry is crazy. So your, the speed of your follow-up proves, now listen, that your value of an SOP, which is personal, is that if you give me a business card, I'm gonna be as quick as I, I possibly can to communicate to you because I value your card and I value you as a person, I value your company. I've had people contact me six months later in the industry. I don't remember anything about them or where I met them or what the name of their company is like. David, we met at so-and-so. And I'm like, I've been to five business expos from that time. I have no idea who you are. I forgot about you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Unless you're Karen and nobody forgets her. Okay. <laughs> now, this is the last SOP. Um, you already know what's coming. You've already seen some of it on, on, uh, on uh, you know, the evening news, right? Where there's a testing company and they get 10 different products of CBD oil, right? And what are they finding? Well, this is actually fish oil, right? Or this is just olive oil. And, and this is car oil, right? And I don't know what they're going to find, but what are they going to find? They're going to find that the quality of people's products and services are not what they have on the back. And that's when you get sued. Quality is going to be the name of the game, not quantity in the future. Either you're going to become a high-end boutique CBD company, or you're going to become a white label. And that, everybody in between is going to fall away. You're not going to see. I mean, just go on Instagram for a day and see how many new CBD companies are popping up in one day on Instagram. It is shocking. Why? Well, because right now, if the quality of your products and services aren't better than anyone else in a year from now, you won't have the customers you used to have. They'll go somewhere else. So, SOPs ensure that your ideas, team, and finances are protected. That's an important statement when you think about moving forward. Because of the documentation. If you do a major deal, I really hope that you have a corporate lawyer that looks at the document. I hope you just don't write it on Word or find a PDF online and say, I hope it's good enough. You may never get paid. The document is happening all the time. And retains your wealth. Now look, look, look. That causes nightly, not morning, <laughs> nightly peace. <laughs> Any man here did a deal that you couldn't sleep the night after? You're like, oh man, I hope that was a good move. Okay, that means your SOP didn't protect you in your sleep. The CBD is not supposed to be there because you have insomnia because you did bad business. <laughs> That's not the purpose. All right, so when you generate revenue or gain an investment infusion, you, have, uh, you can pay to have most of your SOPs created for you. Um, most people today don't have the time to, to create all the SOPs that you need to do good business, right? And nobody's coming out with a package that they can say, hey, it's a business in a box, for $50,000 and here's everything you need. It doesn't work that way. So why doesn't it work that way? Because you are your own business and your feel and your values have to be in those SOPs. Otherwise it's somebody else's company. So you've got a couple options. You can go to the bank, get a loan for 100K and pay somebody else to develop SOPs for your company with you. Uh, or you can maybe just grow your company quick without having it. And hopefully somebody will buy it for a couple million dollars, right? We've seen that right now. You know, it's 80 to one on the on the New York Stock Exchange for cannabis companies right now today. It won't be there in a year from now, but it is right now. So your revenue, if you get a whole bunch of money through sales, you have money to work on your SOPs because then you're not saying this. I don't have to worry about my cash flow. I can focus on my SOPs or maybe get an investment so that you can fix your SOPs. Now, this is what we're finding over and over and over. The people that really want the money have to pitch an average of three to five times every single week to get it. If you're not in front of investors on a consistent basis, if you're not developing your pitch deck and getting everything ready, guess what's gonna happen? When you bump into an investor and they ask you a couple questions, you don't know what the answers are. We've sat in some horrible meetings of pitches. Have you been there? I mean, it makes you, I, I remember 
that there were sweat glands on my hands that started to sweat. I've never sweat on the backs of my hands. And I was just like, oh, this is a terrible pitch. Oh, no. Oh, no. I believe in the person, but I wouldn't give them a penny. They made me more confused when they were done than when they started. So guess what we have? We have a very unique event. You're not going to find this event anywhere else in the industry or in the world because we have taken the uh, a, a plethora of different options that you don't have time for and put it into one five-hour event. Most people don't have time for training, coaching, hearing motivational speaking, pitching, getting investments, and they say, oh yeah, I can do that in um, over the next five months. They don't have time, they're too busy. So what we have is the most unique pitching event that you've ever experienced. And if you want to gain funding, this is the place you want to go. So for those of you that don't know, uh, the most influential person in the industry, his name is Morris Beagle, is the largest hemp uh, exposium, uh, symposiums in the world. So he has just, uh, yesterday, has gotten behind our event, and he is therefore emailing his entire database because he wants people funded in, um, in the hemp industry. So if you want funding, this is something you want to look at. It's in, um, it's in uh, it, next month. It's on the 22nd of August. So here's what we've got. We've developed an SOP that we believe has removed almost every single barrier for you to get funding and the people that you're partnered with. So let's say you're a farmer and let's say you're a fifth generation farmer and everything's paid off and you, you got 100 acres and now it's going to take you 15 uh, K per acre next year and you got to raise this kind of money. How are you going to do that? Most farmers don't know what investors need. Most extractors don't know what that means. Most business people don't know how to get an investor so that they get exactly what they want out of the deal and they're happy about it. But I've heard of lots of deals taking place where people are unhappy with the investment because they lost more than what they got. So what we have is a funnel here. It's called the HBA Private Investment System. It's an SOP. We've developed it over and over and over and we've almost got all the kinks out of it. So here's what it is. We have a heart for every single business, every single person in the hemp industry. We are weary of hearing there's not enough money when there's so much money. So what we've done is we've said, what is our funnel? How can we help people? Well, they need to know whether or not they want to give up any equity or not. So the four different investment companies we're working with right now that have asked, we have 12 opportunities for funding in the next 30 days. And here's what it looks like. If you say, I don't care about equity. I don't care about who owns equity in my company. We have certain investors that want to purchase your equity uh, in exchange for revenue. We have people that are in the middle, who want half equity and some collateral. We have some that just want 100% collateral. And what happens is when people go to an investor, they only have typically one type of investment in mind and they use the wrong terminology and the investor is not interested. So it could be equity, it could be capital. So if you have some, some collateral, and then you've got some negotiation. And typically, most people don't want to go to New York City and stand in front of 100 New York Stock Exchange investors and say, hey, that's me. I would love to pitch in front of 100. No, most people don't want to do that. Some of you are glazing over with your eyes because you're saying, that's not me. So what we have is we first walk you through a one-hour opportunity to find out where you're at, how much work have you put into your company becoming investor ready? Uh, how close are you to that? Or do you have the seven criteria? Are they completely done? Now, if you have partners and they have companies and they are looking for revenue, you need to send them to us because we, we need to find those 12 companies that need investment and they need them quickly because they may not be here next year and the investors are, will move on and do something else. You just never know. So what we do then is if you have all seven of the requirements done to 90 to 100%, we move you to, into a fast track in which we then go over all those, we screen everything with you, and then no matter what you do from here forward, we have prepped the investors to talk to you. And wouldn't it be great instead of cold calling an investor and saying, hi, this is David, um, yeah, this is Bob, yeah, now who are you again? 
How about they say this? Oh, I've been looking forward to your phone call. David's already told me all about you. It is actually a friendly conversation because most investors are not robots. They're for other people. They want to have a relationship with the people that they're going to invest in. And we have removed so many of the problems so that they're already going to say yes when you call them on the phone. Now, if you don't have 50 to 90% only done, you're not to the 90 to 100%. You say, I got some work to do with my business plan. And if you ask me what a pitch deck is, we'll talk. Okay. Now, invest a pitch is then for you. And you're going to have the opportunity to come to this event. You have five opportunities to pitch to people in the room. We already have over 20 billion represented in that room. They've already committed to it. So if you want to get invested, you need to come to this. But that's if you're not in the 90 to 100%. You need more, more work on your business. Now, if you have zero to 50 okay, you, you don't have any of your business plan done, that's gonna cost you more money. Because it, this, costs, this takes us a little bit of time, this takes us more time, and this takes us a lot of time. We have to sit down with you and hear about what is your business plan. And you say to me, well, David, I don't have the components of my business plan done. Okay, what do, what, what do you feel about these things? How do you think about this? We have to type up some of the thoughts and feelings that you have in that business plan. It's a lot of research. This is a huge project and usually takes about 90 days unless you're a dominant person like my personality. Would you say 90 days is way too long and then you come out to, to Colorado, we spend one week with you and we knock it out in five days. But then you, we, we eat and drink a little bit. Sometimes there's a bathroom break, but we got things to do. So down here are the four investors that because of what you've been able to accomplish with us, we've already gotten a guess for you. We've already prepped you to talk to them on the phone. They're already ready for you to call. And when that happens, then it's no longer a stressful situation where you have to try to come up with what you're going to pitch or how you're going to pitch it. It's just about you saying, getting a yes on the phone and making the deal happen where you say this, we're so happy we found the right investor for our company. So right now, we only have 12 options. So if you need funding or know someone that does, please get with us as quickly as possible. Our team um, has a chart that we fill out with your name, your email, your cell phone number, how much you want to gain an investment. And, um, and by the way, if we believe that we can't get you investment, or you're not 100% satisfied with our services in that hour, we'll refund you the fee for the application. Because we're not about the money, it's about making sure you get funded. Everybody wins when you get funded. So on behalf of the Hemp Business Advisors, I wanted to thank you for the opportunity to talk to you about SOPs. Hopefully your brain is fuller than it's been in a long time. I hope you've thought about different things you've never thought about before and that you're asking yourself the question, what is the volatility of the whole industry? Where is my risk? Where can I make money? Where can I save money? Is it time to get an investor? So my name is David Wilkinson. I'm the co-founder and competitive strategist here at the Hemp Business Advisors. We have four team members. Carrie Cox, she's our corporate liaison. Michaela Wilkinson's my wife, and she's also the creative director. Steve Vance is our operations and events director. And lastly, and most importantly, all the way from South Carolina, are my parents, Bruce and Darlie Wilkinson, sitting right there. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.